NVIDIA Omniverse is a powerful multi-GPU real-time simulation and collaboration platform for 3D production pipeline. NVIDIA Omniverse is based on Pixar's universal scene description and NVIDIA's very own RTX technology. Now the idea behind Omniverse is to create a bridge across different 3D applications and also ecosystems so that artists can easily collaborate regardless of what tool and what place they are within the globe. And today we're exploring Omniverse Create alongside with Maya Connector. And how do you get started with Omniverse? What you need to do is download Omniverse and then of course if you already have a copy of Maya, working with this is super easy. So for Maya, it's as easy as making sure that within the connector section you've installed Maya. If you click on the drop down, if you click on the Maya button, it tells you to install it. And of course you can proceed to install that. And then within the app section of the Omniverse, also make sure that you have the Omniverse Create installed. Now, next thing to do is just to simply click on Omniverse Create, and this is going to pop up the Omniverse Create. Now, back in Maya, what you need to do once you have the connector installed is go over to Windows, go all the way down to where you have your settings and preference, go over to Plugin Manager, and then type in the word Omniverse. Now, once you type in the word Omniverse, you would notice that you have the Omniverse Maya loader installed. So make sure that you have the loaded and also auto load, and then you can close it. You would notice that we have a menu and also we have a shelf now this omniverse shelf is what you can use to connect and do some stuff you need to connect to the omniverse server so to do this you will need to hit on the connect button on your shelf or on your menu and simply use localhost to sign in as this is the default signing in credential of course you can use different localhost servers but the default localhost is actually accurate for you to get started with this and once this turns green it means you're ready to go and you can start creating your stuff which you can now export over to the Omniverse Create. Once you have this ready, the next thing which you need to do is to export your file as a USD. So to export your file, if you go over to the Omniverse menu, you can click on the word export, or you can simply click on the export icon right here within the Omniverse shelf. You need to select the space where you want this to be saved. Within the export option, once it doesn't have anything to do with animation, please export this as prop. Now, once you're done with the export options, simply click on export to export the USD. Now, once you export the USD and you pop right into Omniverse Create, you would notice that our file known as basic is right here. This is because we have Maya connected to the Omniverse. And of course, you can also see that the URL which we used in saving our data is also listed here. Now, to get this model right into the viewport, what you need to do is you can either click and drag or you can double click to load this right into your viewport. Now with this ready, in most cases, you might also want to go in and throw in a couple of lights and other stuff. And to get this happening is as simple as going over to the create section, lights, throw in a dome light in this case. And then within the property section, you can choose the HDRI that you like to use to light this. And once you have your HDRI loaded, you can also proceed to play with the exposure. You can play with the intensity, depending on what you want. Now, if you're also looking for other forms of light, you can go over to create, lights and you can see the different kinds of lights that you like to play with if you're looking for shapes or you're looking for a particular kind of mesh you can also explore these ones right here now it's also very interesting to note that with the omniverse create you can also add audio cameras materials flows and also physics so we could say we'd like to get a simple box right in here and due to the size of the object which you've created you can tell that the size that we have is extremely small. So let's go all the way out and scale this all the way. Now it's also worth knowing that because you're working with USDs, that most of these things are considered as stages and they are saved up in a hierarchy. Now, if you take a look within the stage section, you would notice that we have the cube and also the P cube coming from Maya. So we can easily go in there to select it and also select the cube. Something else which you would notice is a folder called looks. Now within the looks folder is where the shaders that you're working with exist. And in this case, these shaders are coming in from the shaders that we assigned in Maya. So if we go in and pop these scenes side by side, we'll take a look at how you can work directly with Maya scenes alongside with what you can get with the Omniverse Create. So how do we live link? How do we send materials back and forth? Because of course we have the same material name, Lambert, and uh, you know, the same material name, because if we go over to Windows, go all the way down to Rendering, Hypershade, we have exactly the same material name. So how do we then get our model and also the update of our model over 
to Omniverse. It's as simple as making sure that you have the enable live link turned on. So if I click on enable live linking, it will require us to either keep the local source or fetch from Omniverse. Either ways, if you choose to fetch from Omniverse or you keep the local source, it's going to go back and forth and you can transfer data between the both of them. So if we say fetch from Omniverse, it is going to fetch what we have from Omniverse right here. Now, in this case, for us to also get exactly what we have here going back and forth between these two, we need to also go over to the layer section and then click on the tiny cloud icon to create the live syncing session. Now, once you click on that, click on always on. And once you click on always on, scroll all the way out, you would now notice that we have the cube, we have the HDRI right here in Maya. And this makes it even way easier for you to get your rendering happening within your viewport and also have your models working for you. So we can go in and select different parts of the model at this point, and we can move these things back and forth. And automatically, because we have our live sync turned on, you can see this update on the fly. So this is going to be very useful for collaborators, especially those who will be working with different team members and you want to see updates happening really, really quick. So a very simple example that we can look at is right here that we have our scene. We can choose to throw in a light. So if we go over to where we have Arnold and throw in a simple Arnold light and raise this all the way up, you would notice that we have exactly the same lighting happening there. On the other hand, you can also choose to load up lights directly from Omniverse and then control that light directly in Maya. So to take a look at that, if you go in and draw in a rectangular light and raise this all the way and move it backwards, you can see that we have that light right here. I can select this light, go over to our channel box and control how much intensity of the light I would like us to keep. So we can drop that light intensity all the way down to two, for example, and we can also increase this as much as we want. So with this here, we can also choose to throw in a dome light. So previously we threw in a dome light directly from Omniverse, but either ways we can still throw in a dome light directly from Maya and automatically that dome light is also going to be in Omniverse. And for camera, if you create a camera in either of these apps, you can also choose to look through the camera. Now for Omniverse, for you to look through a camera, you need to go over to the perspective and then click on the button select cameras and select the camera that you want to look through. And that is how easy it is. The same thing happens in Maya, but for Maya it's just slightly different. You need to go over to your viewport menu and then click on panels, perspective, and you can select the camera that you want to look through. And with the camera right here in Maya, you would notice that we have a couple of discrepancies. So to fix this, you can simply go over to your attribute editor. Let's minimize this. And then we can reduce the near clip to 0.1 and then we can increase the far clip by an extra zero. So with this here, whatever changes you make to the camera right here in Maya automatically happens in Omniverse. And at any point you would like to duplicate anything directly in Maya, of course you can choose to do that because we have the live sync turned on. You can simply make duplicates and automatically they're going to be duplicated right here within Omniverse. So if we switch over to our perspective and we go right in here, we can start doing some beautiful stuff. So we can make a copy of the pots that we have here. So let's just go in, select that, select this other one and drop that right here. Make sure that it's sitting properly on the seat and we have that and probably we we'll need a couple of lights. So we can also go in and throw a simple light. So let's go over to create lights throw in a very simple sphere light, make sure that we have that light dragged all the way up. So let's also go ahead and pick that light and drag it all the way to this point. And we can increase the intensity of the light. And with the sphere light there, we can also proceed to do even way more stuff. So at this point, if you like to tweak and play with materials, of course you can also choose to do that. So if you like to make changes to the textures, of course you can. Now, before we get into talking about textures, let's switch this from RTX real time to RTX path trace. So with this switch to RTX path trace, you can tell that the rendering looks even better. So with this ready, we can make some changes to the textures and a very good example is with the wall. So maybe we don't want this to have too much specularity. So what we can do is with this selected, we can now go over to windows rendering hypershade. And so once we have that ready, we can make whatever change we want. 
So with this object selected, hit on this tiny button for the input and output, and then we can go right in here and start making some tweaks. So to whatever tweaks that we make right here in Maya, it is also going to reflect directly in Omniverse. So if we select this and we proceed to give it a given color, like say green, for example, you can notice that directly in Omniverse we're getting that. If we choose to make it a given color like this, you'd also notice that to whatever color that we choose to select, that we also have that right there. And this also ripples down to the kind of roughness that you get and all that stuff. So I'm just going to set this one all the way to 700, scroll all the way down, and you can see a couple more parameters that you can tweak to your liking. If you are also thinking about creating stuff, yes, you can. So at this point, we can also proceed to create a very tiny cube. And with that cube right in there, let's say, for example, like to create a very simple image frame. So with the image frame here, you can also proceed to start applying or assigning materials to your model. So how you can assign materials to your model is very, very easy. Go over to your Hypershade one more time. Within your Hypershade, you would notice that we have the MDL materials. Now within your MDL materials, there's a couple of materials that you may want to check out. So in this case, I'm just going to select the Omni surface and I'm just going to call this wooden frame. So let's call this a wooden frame and uh, select OK. So in this case, I can proceed to change the color to something more wooden like. So let's go in and give it a given color like so. Let's take a look at what we have. Then I'm just going to select this object, right click and assign this to the object within the viewport. In most cases, you might probably not get to see exactly what you have in Maya in terms of material right here in Omniverse Create. So what you need to do is select the object itself. In this case, our frame is known as PCube one Go over to the material section, click on the drop down and then look for the word wooden. Now, once you do this, automatically you get to see a visual feedback of the same material that we applied in Maya now available in Omniverse. So this is one of the quickest or, you know, the coolest way that you can get these things happening in real time. And just in case you have any issues with your materials, try to confirm that you're having the material or simply close and reselect the material. And this way you can fix any material problems that you're having from Maya back into Omniverse Create. So there's a whole lot of things that you can do with Omniverse Create alongside with Maya Connector. And for anyone who is thinking about moving things back and forth from Maya over to Omniverse for real-time simulation and also for collaboration with different artists, then this is a one-stop solution that you can actually take a look at. And of course, you can proceed to do some very cool loop devs for what you want, make a couple of styles, and once you're ready, you can proceed to rendering. Now, rendering with the Omniverse is super easy as all you need to do is go over to the render menu, click on rendering, go over to the render setting, and depending on the renderer that you're working with, you can choose to make changes. Like right now, we're working with the path trace, so it just simply makes sense to use the path trace renderer as our final renderer. Now within this section, you can make changes to both the post-processing, if you like to have like motion blur, you would like to have depth of field, you can make all of those changes and actually have them working. At the same time, you can go over to the common tab and also make a couple of changes and also make some final changes within the path tracing. Once you're done with all of this, you can now proceed to rendering, movie capture, and this is where it all comes together. Now, in this case, if you like to render a movie, you can select movie type, as a sequence and you can also select the camera which you like to render with you can select the frames per second now in our case since we're just rendering a single frame all we need to do is to make sure that we have our resolution done properly and then within the render preset you need to click on the drop down and select the render preset that you want so already we talked about this earlier that we're using the path trace so we need to make sure that we have this as path trace if you want to name this as well you can proceed to name it properly select the file type that you want and then finally click on capture current frame so what happens is this would go ahead and render this image as a single frame now if you want to review the image that you've just rendered click on this tiny button which shows us the image that we have so from here you can click right click and say open in file browser and that way you'll be able to preview this within the file browser so once you double click you now have your rendered image right here. So depending on what you like to create, these can come in extremely, extremely handy. Now, for those who are also thinking about the denoising features and all that, if you don't want to get all of this denoising, 
you can go over to your rendering section, you can turn off the noising from here. If you don't want to have like sampling, caching and all that, you can also proceed to do all of this. So without the noising feature, you can see that this takes a while to actually get the clean stuff. And we can also proceed to also play with how much fireflies we want. And of course, if you also want to get the post-processing in, you can also proceed to throw in a couple of post-processing effects. And in this case, we can say we want to get some color grading happening. Maybe we just want to crank this up a bit and we might want to lift the reds or maybe we can drop that down, maybe lift a bit of the blue because we're losing that. We can go over to rendering movie capture and let's render this. So I'm just going to call this capture three and then click on capture current frame. And that way we'll be able to capture the current frame. Something else which you can easily do here is you can actually animate your cameras. So just in case you would like to animate your cameras or you want to bring in animations, those things are extremely possible and uh, you can easily get started with working with them. And for those that are thinking about doing some physics stuff, you can also work with physics directly here or you can send in some caches directly from Maya right into Omniverse Create and get the most out of it. So from creating objects to working with materials and also setting up your scene, doing some incredible lighting and doing simulation, Omniverse Create alongside with Maya Connector actually makes working and collaborating with various persons an easy breeze. So for anyone who would like to take a look at this, you can simply go over to the NVIDIA Omniverse page and download Omniverse and you can take advantage of the Pixar Universal Scene description alongside with NVIDIA RTX and do some real-time collaboration with creators and also artists alike.